Um, so Sean, first off, I mean, thanks for, thanks for joining me. I really appreciate it. I know these times are kind of crazy, uh, I, but at the same time, you're just kind of like going through it. I imagine like everyone else, um, just why don't you give us your thoughts on just how unbelievable this time is and how you guys are trying to make the best of it. Oh man, it's, uh, it's definitely not something I ever thought I would see, you know, uh, so just to be going through this, you know, I uh, just wanted to make sure you continue to stay prayed up, you know, um, a lot of families affected by it. So, you know, my thoughts and prayers definitely with them. I'm just, uh, for me personally, you know, I'm just trying to stay in shape uh, the best way I can, you know, at home workouts with bands, you know, different cardio things of that sort. So uh, trying to stay in shape, uh, keep my mind, my body focused. But um, yeah, it's definitely been a, like a tough, weird time for everybody, I feel like. Well, what's the hardest part? I mean, I know, you know, look, there's no basketball. There's You're kind of hunkered in the house and you're trying to make the best of it. but um, for you, I mean, I know you've got family around, you got people around you all the time. I mean, what's what's the hardest part for you as you kind of navigate all this? Yeah, I think just, uh, you know, it's, it's tough to really know when to travel, things of that sort, you know, uh, when it's kind of safe to go places. You kind of want everything to, you know, die down a little bit. You know, you don't want to you know, put anybody at risk. So it's just that decision-making process, I feel like. You know, uh, I have a son that lives, you know, I'm in Sacramento now, I have a son that lives in L.A., you know, don't want to expose him to it, you know, don't want to want to make sure I'm not flying there. And uh, like I said, just, you know, getting him exposed to it, you know, I think, so I think that's the toughest part for me, just that decision-making process, deciding when it's important to leave, when it's important to go places, and, uh, when it's important to just stay in, stay in the house. I know you're much younger than I am, but I, can, I was like, can you imagine if we had to go through this even 10, 15 years ago? I mean, even five years of technology is so much different. I mean, here oh, yeah. we are talking face to face. I imagine that's a huge benefit for someone like yourself. Like you said, you got your son in LA. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. I think the people are benefiting well from technology during this time. You know, I've seen crazy entertaining things on Instagram. You know, uh, different guys talking on there, doing dances, showing workouts. So yeah, it's. Uh, I think social media, you know, technology has given us a, a great chance to still interact with each other and with the fans. So it's a beautiful thing. I'm glad you went down that road because that's where I was going to lead to eventually, but we might as well just jump into that real quick because uh, my goodness, <laughs> I've taught every, every interview I do, I have to ask somebody what's the series that they're on. What's a movie, what music recommendations, just to pass the time, video games. I know that's a big thing for you. Okay. Uh, what can you recommend? Um, I actually just finished watching Game of Thrones. That's a show I was on. I started rewatching it and I caught like a bunch of stuff I didn't understand. And so I'm kind of just trying to go back and watch shows that I that I've watched before, like didn't really catch everything that was in there. So I'm a I'm a head to the wire next. I'm gonna rewatch that. And, uh, that's one of my favorite shows of all time as well. So you know, uh, it, it's a bunch of shows out there that you can watch, especially on Netflix. Netflix has a bunch of new material that I kind of just scroll through, and uh, you know, just keep everybody occupied. Yeah, those are those are good uh, recommendations for sure. I mean, you got HBO right there. I mean, what what did you think? Did was Game of Thrones that much better this second time around? Oh man, it was great. It was great. Like I said, it was the first time. You know, you kind of just watching it, going through it, and you just going through all the ups and downs, all the excitement. And you know, for me, I really didn't catch all the little details, like the little lead-ins. You know, from season one that lead up to season eight that connected and connected dots all the way back you know I wasn't able to do that so to go through this time you know I was able to just understand everything and understand why things happened you know why season eight happened the way it did you know like that so it, it was fun it was fun it's good to actually see you. I know you're used to probably seeing me harass you every, for a while every you know daily in and out when you're in town um but I'm just glad to look at you and notice you haven't changed much the hair still looks fine you haven't gone deer and fox and shaved got, gotten cut it all <laughs> off yet <laughs> man, I, that, that picture still looks photoshopped with him without his hair, man. I, I'm not going to believe it until I see it in person. <laughs> I'm really not. <laughs> Has anybody hit him up in the group chat? I know these famous group chats where the whole team is on it. I got to imagine that's a pretty big topic of conversation. Oh, yeah. Moment. I thought everybody was shocked. You know, I don't think anybody was expecting that. You know, like no warning, no nothing. He just cut it off. You know what I'm saying? So it's. It's pretty shocking to see, but like I said, I don't think I'm going to believe it until I see it in person. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. So, you're, But nothing drastic for you, right? You're going to try to keep it, no matter how long this goes, probably probably keep things as is, right? Uh, for the most part, you know, I might make little tweaks in there, but I'm, I'm not cutting my hair off. <laughs> 
I said when this started, I think the thing that we're going to see most is is a lot of a whole lot of new tattoos in the league. Oh man, that that's true. I I, I might come back with a few new ones. I, I'm actually looking to get some tattoos probably sometime this week if I can. But yeah, I, I could definitely see that happening. I could that definitely is, see that happening. That is breaking news right here. What do you what, what what's the motivation? What do you have? What are you thinking? Um, I got a bunch of different ideas, honestly. Like I, I always have my tattoos mapped out, and I just been you know thinking of different things. And uh, so I got a lot of ideas. I just need like kind of to draw it on paper and kind of see it. So I get back to you on that one. I appreciate that. No, I appreciate. It. So you draw you you draw your own inspiration, and then you don't you don't go oh, through the catalog or anything. I mean, I do the best I can to draw. I, I'm I'm good at describing what I like, and I have somebody to draw it for me. Like I'm pretty good at describing like exactly what I want. But all my all my tattoos, everything that I get, you know, I design in my head first. So yeah, the catalog, I don't need that. <laughs> I got you. See, that's, that's, that's unlike me going, having to go to Vegas and find out my first tattoo would be like something out of a book in, in some gallery. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with that either though. <laughs> nothing wrong with that. Not recommended for sure. So I, I see this thing today. Uh, I was getting some information across for the past few days um, about looking to try help out local restaurants and local families in need. Um, where, where did kind of this inspiration come from to kind of team together with a few teammates and, and, Kind of help some people that that really could use it right now. Yeah, well, well, for me, I I actually went grocery shopping myself, and I think it was about I want to say like a week, week and a half ago. And man, when I say there was like nothing in there, like the everything was stripped, was no meats, no frozen foods, nothing. So I'm thinking, I know it's tough for me to get food. I know it has to be you know very tough for people, you know, supporting families and things of that sort. So for me, I just want to do something to, you know, just help, just lend a helping hand as much as I can. You know, I know it's a tough time, especially on the economy for a lot of people and a lot of their families. So just wanted to try to do something, try to do anything, you know, something small, just feed as many families as we can. And it was an idea that grew something. We were able to get the Chicago Fire Restaurant on board to donate meals. And, you know, it, it just kind of grew. And you know, we were able to get, you know, help out a lot of families. Yourself, Harrison Barnes, De'Aaron Fox, Bogdan Bogdanovich, uh, all picking different individual restaurants, and with the help of the Kings, you're going to feed over a thousand families. I mean, when you when you kind of see things get go to come together, a plan come together so quickly and and so you know effectively, how does that make you feel? Ah, it's beautiful. It's beautiful, especially when you're talking about helping the community. You know, it was no hesitation at all on my teammates' part. It's something they wanted to be a part of, something they wanted to help do to give back to this community that is, you know, just supported us so much. So it, it feels good. It feels good just to be able to, you know, reach more families, help more people, you know, with the help of my teammates. You know, it, it's definitely a great feeling. I'm, I'm right there with you today. I actually had to get up about 5 a.m. to try to get to uh, the grocery store, get all suited and booted with the mask and everything. Oh, and, yeah. and and I was lucky enough to find toilet paper. So it was. Oh, man. Yeah. Happy for that. Happy yeah. for that. Man, it, was, it was tough. It was tough. Like we. Like, I was waiting a while for the restock, and I'm just thinking, like, man, I've never even seen a grocery store. Imagine the grocery store looking like this. So, yeah, it's definitely a tough time. I know it was interesting. You know, you I had talked to you a couple times before things really got bad, even before the season had ended. And, you know, I was tasked with having to get reaction to this. And it's it's always silly and full disclosure. I think I even told you at the time, I'm like, I got to get guys to talk about this. And you know, mm-hmm. we're not doctors. I don't know. I don't know what the hell's going on. And, and I know you guys don't, but I was like, how's it affecting the locker room? And at the time it was just kind of like a, well, I guess we deal with it when we deal with it. You know, we've got our faith. We, we figure that we're strong. We're, we're going to do our part, but you know, we don't really see it as being much of a problem. And then boom, look what happens. I mean, were, were you just as surprised as everyone else to see the way this thing took off? Oh, definitely. I was shocked. You know, uh, I don't think anybody imagined it you know, spreading the way it did and becoming, you know, the pandemic that it became, you know, especially when it first started out, it was, you know, something everybody was talking about, you know, people were kind of joking about it, you know, because we, we didn't know, people didn't know what was going on. And um, I think the day where the season was shut down was where the seriousness really, you know, set in and resonated with everybody to, you know, cancel the NBA season, especially in the thick of the playoff race, you know, that means it's something serious and, when it comes to our health, you know, people, you know, we had to put that first. And so uh, I think that kind of re- – the seriousness kind of resonated when the season was canceled and people started taking the necessary precautions and start doing what we can to, you know, prevent the spread. 
it, I take me back to that night because here we are, we're all in the arena and we're getting stuff coming out in real time and it, it's a little chaotic, but for you as players, I mean, you, you know, you come out and try to keep things as normal. I know you got family in the stands and you're mm-hmm. concerned about, you know, even fans are on edge and, and then you're seeing what happens, you know, in Oklahoma city with Utah and the thunder. Uh, yeah. And then, and then of course, you know, your, your game gets, you guys take the floor uh, take us back to that night. What stands out, and just how, how chaotic was it for you guys as players? Oh yeah, it was it was very chaotic, and uh, you know I can remember we were all in the back looking at the the Utah uh, OKC situation, and we saw that that game was canceled. We were like, wow, you know, like two players tested positive, so immediately our thoughts and prayers went to those players. But we had no idea the season was going to be canceled yet. And so I remember when that news first broke, it was like, oh, man, this is serious. Like, players are catching it. And 15 minutes later, they talked about the game was canceled. Then I think another 15 minutes later, the news came that they were suspending the season. And the last word that we got before we took the floor was that this was going to be the last game until they postponed the season. And so I remember Coach came, gave his pregame speech and everything. Uh, we all fired up. I remember we were joking like it was the NBA Finals, you know, last game of the season. We got to leave it all out there. And I remember running out, and it was probably 20 minutes left on the clock. So we're warming up, and it gets down to like 15, 12 minutes, still warming up 10 minutes, and we don't see the Pelicans. Like, the Pelicans have not come out yet. We still don't got news, but for a team not to come out with 10 minutes left in the warm-up, like, you kind of know something's going on. And, uh, you know, we get the news that they're not going to play. They didn't feel comfortable playing after the news. And um, went to the back, found out the season was canceled after that. Like, people just kind of sat there in shock and disbelief. And immediately, my mind switched to, okay, we got to take precautions now because now it's, it's getting serious and it got to be getting out of hand for them to cancel the NBA season. Like, i still in disbelief that the season was canceled. So, yeah, we just, just got to do what we can to get this under control for real. Yeah. I appreciate you sharing that with me. I mean, I, I, were you guys even aware when you were on the floor that the, the official was a, one of the officials of that night was a concern? Oh, uh, no, we didn't. We had, like, we took the floor to warm up. The last word we got was we're about to play the last game of the season, so let's get ready. Let's leave it all out there. And once we went out there and saw that the Pelicans weren't coming out to warm up, we kind of knew something was going on. That's when we got the news about the official and about the, the rest of the season. Wow. How about in terms of just awaiting the, the news that maybe things can step up here again and get kicked off? Is, is, is there an anticipation or do you just kind of, you know, hey, we're a month, we're almost a month in now and, you know, it's, it kind of is what it is. Do you just kind of wait for the news or are you, are you on pins and needles waiting for it or hoping that this can get restarted or do you just kind of go, hey, you know, probably won't? <laughs> I mean, you just, I feel like you just stay ready. Like it's such an unpredictable time. And I think everybody's trying to figure out how to handle it. So you never know what the final decision on the NBA return it could be. You know, you don't know if it could be next month or the month after that. You just like, you really don't know. Nobody really knows. And I think as professionals, we just have to keep our body in shape and, you know, keep our minds healthy and things of that sort, just so we're ready to go when we're called upon because, this is an unprecedented time, so this is going to be an unprecedented way to deal with it. No, that's well said. I only have a few more here for you real quick. I just <laughs> in, in thinking about all of this, um, I know I've seen guys get to do video game tournaments. I know Harrison got mopped in 2K. I mean, what have you just kind of oh, made of <laughs> They should have let me play, man. <laughs> they should have let me play, man. That was, that was terrible. <laughs> There's some guys that at least have been competitive, but the two guys that I know the most in Harrison Barnes and DeMarcus Cousins got just wat- mopped. I just couldn't believe it. <laughs> it was a tough first round for <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. Is there a video? Do you guys give him any grief on the, uh, on the group text, or <laughs> do you just kind of let it be? I mean, I, I just let it rock because that 2K is such a, like, it's a different game, man. And it can go, it, like, either way, but. They, they should have let me play. They, they should have let me represent the Kings. I would have did a little bit better than that. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't have done much worse, that's for sure. <laughs> um, I, I did want to ask you, the one guy I felt really terrible for in, um, amid this whole thing was, was actually you, because here you are missing, it was like 25 games, I think. You come back, play two, and then now here's a long absence and could be yeah. the end of the season. We don't know. Um, how did, what, how, what's that do to your mind? I mean, I know you were itching to play. You come back. 
played well in those two games, and then now it's just taken away from me again. Again, I mean, it did definitely sucks, you know, for me personally. You know, like you said, it's a work hard to come back and uh, you know get ready for the playoff push to you know, help the team. And uh, you know, for the season to be canceled, you know, it, it was tough. It, it was tough, but I think my mind, like I said, my mind immediately switched to, okay, how can we, what, what we need to do to you know slow the spread? What can we do to you know stay safe? Where's my son? How can I get to my son to make sure he's safe? Things of that sort. So. You know, my, you know, for a minute I felt it, you know, was kind of upset about the season being canceled, you know, because, you know, I just wanted to play. You know, I hadn't played in a while. So, you know, I just wanted to play, get back in the swing of things. But after it happened, I think, like I said, the seriousness resonated with me personally. And I immediately started thinking about how can I help and how can I get to my son and make sure my family's safe. And so, yeah, it was it was a quick flip of the switch. That's great. And for, for you now, um... <laughs> And who knows when this like, kind of thing gets going again. But I know that you play, playing your first season here in Sacramento, we've talked to you many times about it this year. Uh, but the community in this fan base has really gone, gone attached to you and what you've been able to do on the, on the, on the court and in the community now, especially. Um, just how much does that um, kind of play a part in wanting to give back and, and kind of reward some of these people that have shown you so much love? Oh man, it, it's it's very important to me. It's very important. Like I said, it was since I've got here, they've showed me a unbelievable amount of love, and you know, it's just been genuine. And you know, it's when you when you receive love like that, when you not used to receiving it, you haven't you know been in a place so long. It just makes you grow so attached, and you know, you really feel what the people are going through when you're out here. You know, like I've grown so attached to these friends. And um, like I said, when I when I went, took that grocery store trip, that was the first thing I thought about was the people in Sacramento, like how are they getting their groceries, how are they feeding their families, like this is. So that's that was very important to me, just because of how genuine Sacramento fans were, you know, to me, you know. So you know, they've always been on my mind throughout this and this entire thing, and you know, to be able to give back and to be able to help as any way I can, you know, it's very important to me and very special to me. That's the thing that really took me because it's one thing for them to have a, you know, an admiration for you and, and appreciation for what you do on the court. But then it's another thing for them to really get into with your family. I mean, your mom oh, yeah. is, <laughs> your mom's a superstar. Definitely. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Like I said, and it's been genuine. It's been genuine. You know, they genuinely embrace my mom or whenever they see her, they always, oh, I love you, Miss Holmes. I love you so much. You know, it's, it's genuine. And when people do genuine things like that, you definitely just want to reward it, you know, and, uh, to them accepting me, accepting my family, you know, I can't thank them enough for that. Well, whatever this looks like, if this does get re this, the season does get kicked off again and resume play, um, and you guys can get back on the court, how do you like your chances if everything goes back to the, we'll let you finish out the games, and maybe there's fans, maybe there's not, but how do you just like your guys' chances, the Sacramento Kings making this playoff push? I love our chances. You know, I feel like before the season was, was ended, we were playing our best basketball. You know, everybody was gelling, everybody was coming together, and we were winning some tough games. So, you know, I, we were going to make a great push, you know, um, something we were prepared for, something mentally we talked about. And, um, you know, we wanted to give our all out there and you know, let the chips fall where they may. So I think our chances, you know, we, we made our chances what they were by, you know, competing and playing our best basketball. And I feel like we would have continued to do the same. What do you chalk that success up to, where all of a sudden things really started clicking for a while? I think everybody just started getting healthy. Everybody was comfortable in their roles, knew what they needed to provide for the team to win, and that's important. You know, uh, everybody understands what they need to do. And for, we were really coming together, like really coming together in our roles. Nobody really cared who was scoring or what was going on. We just wanted to win. The main goal was winning. Everybody was gelling together to help the team win. And speaking of that, I know Harrison Barnes had the thing about, you know, his beard wasn't going to shave it, and he's still rolling with it. Uh, and it's looking <laughs> it's looking pretty uh, pretty incredible. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, nah, HB, he, when he says he's going to do something, he, he's a dedicated guy. He's very dedicated. He, that was just another way of him showing his dedication to the team and still showing his dedication to the team. So, HB, he's a real one. He's a real one. And then finally, uh, just is there a person, an individual, I don't know, maybe it's a player, maybe it's a teammate, maybe it's someone behind the scenes that's just made, uh, that you've just really clicked with here in Sacramento, that just made you really feel welcome. And, and, and I know you could probably say it's everyone, but is there one person you can kind of lock on that says, man, if this person wasn't here, things could look a little bit different for me? 
Yeah, every you know everybody you know I click with, but uh, I think in particular uh, during my rehab process, my trainer Tommy, man, he every day you know rehabbing my shoulder, you know, just reminding me everything was gonna be good, you know, telling me new spots to hit and sack, just you know keeping my spirits up throughout that whole rehab process. That was big time for me, and that, that's a guy I really appreciate because he always will put a smile on your face or just be his his self, you know, be as happy, you know, and you know, got to get you through it, you know, want to make sure doing everything right, doing every shoulder exercise over again to make sure that I'm getting stability. Even when I hated him for it, you know, he just, he did his job and did it with a smile on his face. and He's very genuine about it. So definitely appreciate him for that. And, and because of that, I mean, are you at a position where, you know, things will be pretty good this off season or do you anticipate probably having to get it looked at and maybe operated on in the off season? No, no, I'm, I'm, I feel good. I showed good. I went through the rehab process and uh, feels good. It feels great. You know, no pain. So I'm looking to just work and continue to get better and continue to reinvent myself. That's great. Well, Rashawn, I really appreciate you. I know this is a little bit longer in the, in the interview we're used to, but uh, it's been great catching up with you. That's what happens when I'm at home working from I'm home. Not, that's all I did. I don't, <laughs> as I don't got nothing else to do. So I appreciate you having me.